Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick overview comparison video between Ninjato here, a board game that came out a few years ago, uh, and this one, Kodachi, which is a card game version slash re-implementation slash sequel, if you want, to Ninjato here, using a lot of the same ideas and concepts, but employing new mechanisms and turning everything into just a card game. So I'm going to go ahead and explain a couple of how uh, a couple of the things and how they work in Ninjato here. I'll show you their equivalent in the card game, and uh, that'll be it for us here. This is designed by A.B. West. This is co-designed by him. Uh, he's the only designer listed on this one. But again, they feel very similar, and, and, and they even use a lot of the same artwork, as you're going to see in just a second here. Uh, I do, overall... I think I enjoy the card game a little bit better, but they are both very solid games, very uh, interesting designs. Uh, and if you have not seen my review video for Kodachi here, definitely make sure you check that out if you want to get the full uh, look at the game and what I think of it, my, uh, my entire uh, views on the card game version of this. So let's go ahead and dive into it, uh, Ninjato and Kodachi head to head. This is what the original game Ninjato looks like set up. You've got lots going on on here. You've got, for example, up here in this corner, the guards, the regular guards, the elite guards, guarding five houses. There are always these five houses in play. In the new game, uh, all of the guards are in a single deck, and so they have been combined. Sometimes you'll face uh, one of the elite guards, but you know if the next one coming up is elite. So you can always choose to back down from a fight if you think you might not be able to take whatever that elite might throw at you. And then in the original game, you've got uh, the cards that go into your hand that allow for that fighting. You begin with some of them, and then you'll take more from over here. You've got these tiles, which sort of behave like virtual cards, uh, special powers you always have in play. Like, for example, you can use this as a, a value 2 or a value 4 car. Uh, card if you uh, if you have that tile in front of you you've got these over here that allow for some majority scoring of the houses when a scoring is triggered and you've got these which are another way to score victory points based on having uh, different elements in the game if you have a lot of those things you multiply them by the kind of cards you've got and so on the new game the card game combines all four of these aspects and the treasure in each of the houses into a single deck of cards. And so you're going to have cards in here, and these all go into your hand now, uh, which are going to be a card, like this card here, for example, is a two, which could be like that special tile. And it has a cost, just like these have a cost and these have a cost, and it has some scoring on it. And then there are these, which again, have a cost, have a card, have a symbol, much like those do, though they do behave slightly differently, and a number of victory points. So there's a lot of combination of ideas, but these are all playable. These all allow you to play them in order to fight off a guard when that guard is flipped. Two major things that have changed between the two versions are the... Uh, style, the mechanism of game, and also the cadence of the game. The original game here is a worker placement style game in which you have your three shurikens here and you are going to be placing them in different locations in order to activate those locations. You can attack a house by doing something like that and then playing cards from your hand to beat that character. You can go down here and buy one of these, you can go over here and buy one of these, same thing across. You can go down here and get more cards for your hand. Uh, so there's all those different places you can go and the players will, you know, take their turn around the table placing three workers. The new game is a deck building game really at its core in which you start with a few cards in your hand, some basics, and you have a set deck that everyone has. 
and then throughout the game you build up that deck of cards as you are acquiring these and they you, you buy them they go right into your hand and then you can use them on the very next fight for their special abilities and at the end of the game you just count up these victory points and maybe any tokens you've gathered that's basically it the other thing as i said is the cadence of the game so in this this original game here if I was going to attack somewhere, let's say I attacked that house there, I would first choose if I want to fight Strength or Stealth. That's still a thing in the card game. And then I would play cards from my hand. So I attack that character with Strength, meaning I have to beat its value. It's a 1, that's a 2, I beat it. I take the lowest treasure, I put it on my shuriken, and I can choose to keep going or back out with all the treasure I've got. I'll continue fighting, so I flip over another one. Uh, I need to beat that Strength, which I actually cannot... Uh, but let's say I had this in my hand, all right? Just for the sake of our example here. If I had this, I could play the five, modify with a plus one, which is what the threes allow you to do as well as being a three. I beat it. I take this one. I put it on there. I continue fighting. I flip over that. Uh, when there's an alarm raised, we draw a new token from the bag. We put it out there. And then we flip the best one over to be guarded by an elite guard. Now I fight that character. I have another five in my hand. Great. I take this and I put it there. And I can now continue fighting or back out. I'm only holding a four, so I'll probably back out and I take all this. At any point I fail, uh, if I continue pushing my luck and I fail, I only take one token from here and the other ones are discarded. right? And now this treasure stays there guarded by a, uh, a you know an elite guard there. If I ever empty the house, there's some other things that happen as well. Uh, and so there's that cadence, and then it's the next player's turn to place a worker. The difference with the new game is the way this works is quite different, really. You are going to still flip over one of these fighters, and then you flip over one card from this reward deck, from the deck of things we're attempting to acquire, and then you fight that with cards from your hand, and you can continue going every time you choose to fight another one you again flip one from this deck and one from this deck and fight once that's done you're gonna get some of these cards these guards now have printed on them tokens just like these you can choose to take them or you can choose to take these at the bottom as long as you pay their cost by discarding these cards so there's that difference, and the more you push your luck, the more cards you're going to get. But there's also the idea that every player at the table, after you've done that, gets one card anyway. So on your turn, let's say this is as far as you got, you're going to get one card. You always get one fewer than the number of guards you beat. So you beat two, you get one. To a minimum of one, you always get one. So, you know, if you beat this, let's say you, you pay a scroll and you earn that card, then... I, even on your turn, I get something. So I would take this and put it in front of me as, as currency, you know? So there's that. That cadence is really very different in the, the card game than it is in the board game. And of course, no worker placements in the card game. The original also has an area majority element to it, which is every time there is a scoring and there is a, a track up here to show you when scoring happens after the third, fifth, and seventh round, last round. Uh, you are going to see who has the most of these specific symbols in blue, green, and red. And they're going to score a number of victory points based on the uh, symbols at the different houses that are on the table. And if you empty out a house, you can switch one of these out. So if I empty this out, I could switch this one for a blue one if I'm fighting uh, in blue. And I happen to have a lot of blue characters helping me out in that fight. The new game, the card game, does not feature any of this kind of play. There is no area majority. You are collecting resources. You are collecting these on the guards and spending them for other cards. The points are right on those cards. And some of them are going to give you a lot of victory points, but their power as, as far as fighting guards isn't so good. You know, it might be a card that's very middle of the road. It's a, it's a four. You know, that's not great for one thing nor another particularly. So that's the idea. One final thing I want to highlight is the uh, cards you are holding in your hand in the game. I love having a hand of cards that are interesting in a game. Now, this is a board game, so that's less important. But in the board game, you only ever have these kinds of cards in your hand. And you're going to buy some more from here. 
So later on, I might place my worker there. I'll get some cards. We replenish the spots. But all of the cards that go in your hand look like this. A big card with a big number on it. And only the three that has a special power of adding or subtracting one to your fight by being played with another card. In the card game, your hand is very dynamic. It's very colorful, you know. You uh, might have some of these. You know, you might have a couple of these. But you're also going to have some special abilities in there, special cards. And these all still count as numbers, but they allow you to do some different things. You know, like this one, for example. If I want to beat a particularly tough, op tough opponent with, uh, with a fight, with strength, I could play the five. I could play this ninja on it. That gives me plus two. And it lets me draw a card from my deck. So I immediately draw a card. I have more power right now in the middle of my turn. It's a little more interesting. And like I said, it's a deck building game wherein uh, you, when you buy a card, it goes right into your hand. So I like that as well. It just makes everything more engaging. Now as far as quality of the components go, I will say the original cards in this board game, in Ninjato, they are better quality than the new cards in the card game, which is unfortunate for sure. Uh, seeing as to how that is pretty much the only component in the new game, I do wish the cards were a little bit um, sturdier, just a little bit nicer. These are not linen finish. They look good. They look largely like the ones in this game, but the card quality is certainly lower than the original ones here, which have a nice linen finish. They, uh, they shuffle well. They feel great. No complaints with the quality there. Uh, and the new ones are leave a little something to be desired. So there you go. Uh, hopefully that gives you a, an overview of some of the differences and some of the adjustments that were made to turn Ninjato into a card game and uh, how things have been manipulated and, and rethought, reworked in order to make that come to fruition. So there you go. That's it for me. If you have not seen my review for the card game Kodachi, definitely make sure you go and check that out to get my, my full thoughts on the game. But here is where I leave you. So I will see you all on the next one. I'm Z Garcia. Have a great day. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.